So when it comes to catheterization, it's really important that everything is clean and sterile. So we've already opened the first bag. Um, so Gary, if you just open that one for us now, in the way that was shown before. I'll just grab that over there. Okay, that's good. So hold the back of the bag, perfect. And then without touching the inside, that's really good. And then just pop it down, brilliant. And then we'll get rid of that over there. So when you're opening these bags up, okay, it's the blue bit you touch, it's only the blue bit, and on the back table I suggest you start doing this now. And then Gary, please feel free as well. So you open up the blue bit and keep it nice and flat and straight all the way as you're doing it, all right? And when you're doing these procedures, it's really important that everything's clean and sterile. So the way of ensuring that is you prepare all your equipment before you start needing it, all right? So when you do this, if we just straighten this out onto the table so it's nice and straight, okay? Just like if you're scrubbing in theater, you'd want it nice and flat. So if you take out the um, drape from your bags and then you fold it open because there's no, or you unfold it, sorry, because there's no hole in it. And then you put a hole in the middle and chuck that bit away from your sterile field. Do not leave it on your sterile field. And then once you've put that hole in it, you can fold it up again, all right? Right, so that's the star our field, uh, sorry, that's the drape sorted, I'll get rid of that for you. And fold it up, put it down. Then you need the swab, uh, cotton wool swabs in the galley pot. And you pop those there. And then the three uh, swabs as well ready, okay? Now, when you open the catheters, I'll leave that there for you, Gary. I'm going to show you first, and I'll get you all to do it at the same time after that is you have equidistant pressure between, so you have the thumbs either side of opening it, okay? Equidistant pressure, and you wanna have it up above your sterile field so it doesn't desterilize it. And then you drop it onto your field, like that, okay? And then, so you haven't desterilized anything, you get rid of the plastic bit, you rip this, and you keep the stickers, because that's really important that that is documented in the notes, all right? That's good, Gary, keep going. Perfect, 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 perfect. Excellent, all right, so take it away. You get rid of the, the plasticky bit, but keep the labels. Brilliant, so I'll chuck it for you, thank you. And you keep hold of that, all right? So you've got most of your kit ready. You get the catheter, you keep it in its um, plastic sheath, and you put that in the kidney dish. And then you get the water ready for injection and you get rid of that and pop that there. So in terms of doing this procedure, what I would advocate in terms of doing it is keeping it as clean as possible, all right? So you wanna keep two hands clean and if you keep two pairs of sterile gloves on, it's really helpful. And we don't have forceps today, but if you get a swab and you open out all your swabs on the back table completely, and they fold them out, and then it's corner to corner, all right? And that gives you more surface area to, to sling around the penis. And then when you're cleaning, so you have a pair of forceps, all right? And then you clean around the urethral opening, around the meatus, like you're removing eye makeup, just once. You wouldn't want to move it around because you end up with panda eyes, and then you get rid of it. You do not put anything back onto your sterile field because that will make it... Um, dirty, obviously, all right? So you'd clean that with all of them. So if you just want to do that, Gary, with, you can use this swab, that's fine, or this, there we go. And you get the cotton wool balls, and then you just clean round. That's great. And then I'll get rid of it for you. Brilliant. All right? That's good. Thank you. Okay, fine. So that's clean. So we'll say we'll get rid of all that. So the, it's a nicely clean. And then what I'd like you to do is to get rid of this swab because it's dirty. You get the drape and you, get the, you put the shiny side down first to make sure that if it does get wet, it's waterproof and it doesn't make the patient uncomfortable. Then you have it like that, all right? Now, when we don't have Instilla gel on the model because we don't need it, but when you're putting Instilla gel in, 
what I would like you guys to do is take the swab, okay, and you make another sling for the penis and you hold it out and up. Now the reason that you need to do that is because it straightens the urethra. So when you're putting the instiller gel in, it won't dribble out all over the place. Okay, so hold the penis out and up, and then you get the instiller gel, or this is the water, but you get the instiller gel syringe, and you hold it like that, and you inject it all the way down, and you let it go down, all right? In real life, when you're catheterizing somebody, you'd hold the penis in this position, or maybe a bit more like that, and it would go in. In the model, you have to hold it like that for it to go in, all right? So if you just do that bit, Gary, just to make sure you're happy with that. Okay, perfect, yeah. Okay, that's great. So we get rid of that swab, that's fine. Um, that's perfect, thank you. Right, so then what I'd get you to do is we'll move this back a little bit and then we'll bring your sterile field round across, all right? And then you're in a position where you can start catheterizing the patient, all right? Now the way to do this is you make a swab and then you... Brilliant. So you put it around the penis, just like that. That's great. Um, if you I'll get that ready for you. Okay. So then this is the bit that I was talking about earlier, where if you hold the penis through the swab, then what it allows you to do is you can grab the catheter with your fingers, and I'll show you all as you come round. You can grab, grab the catheter with your fingers as you're inserting it. So if you go ahead, that's great. And then squeeze it tight, and then pull it back a little bit. Perfect. Let go. So the plastic doesn't touch the penis, okay, so it keeps it nice and clean. And then you just advance it a little bit, squeeze tight, let go. There we go, that's great. A little bit more, keep going. Now bear in mind, on this model, it won't go in all the way. In real life, it's better to put it until the, the bifurcation goes all the way in. The reason that that is important is because... Okay, yeah, we'll stop there, that's fine. The reason that that's important to get the bifurcation all the way in is because if that is flush with the urethral opening, you will notice if it moves a little bit. And if it moves a little bit, it, it could be in the urethra or the prostate and cause problems, all right? Now, if it's hanging out that much already, it is harder for you to appreciate, has it moved that much or has it moved that much? Where if it's all the way in, you know. Okay, so in real life, you put it all the way in. If you've put it all the way in real life and you do not get flashback, you need to get a bladder syringe, connect it to that one and aspirate back to get urine and that then and only then you can inflate the balloon. Okay? So that's perfect. So we put, we empty that um, plastic sleeve. That's great. And we'll get rid of that. It could be full of urine yet. So you've got a test. You can test that. That's fine. And then just pop it into here. Okay. And then this, you're filling up the balloon in the bladder, okay, so now let's squeeze it, keep squeezing, that's great, any pressure or any pain then you'd stop and then you keep that pressure on the syringe before you undo it and then that's in and you'd connect this to your, um, you'd connect this to your catheter bag, alright, so if you just take that up for me that would be great, thank you, have you guys got any questions on that?